Welcome to the Archive for Sexology. We offer, among many other things, a free online curriculum in sexual health. I am its author, Erwin Haberl. The curriculum consists of six courses, six semesters, and it can be studied not only at home, but also in the classroom. Right now, I would like to talk about the detail in our second course, Human Reproduction. Namely the question, what is the difference between natural and artificial methods of contraception? Our course deals, among many other things, also with this question. You can see it at the beginning of the section now on the screen. Since the letters may be too small on this video, I will read the words on this page aloud. All contraceptive methods have been developed through long and careful observation of the procreative process. They all involve the application of scientific knowledge or rational calculation, and most of them require the use of chemicals or special tools, gadgets, devices, or instruments such as a calendar or thermometer. In each case, Human cunning prevents nature from simply taking its course. In short, contraception is always the result of a conscious decision which uses certain laws of nature to circumvent certain others. This elementary fact has sometimes been obscured by writers who have tried to create a distinction between natural and artificial means of contraception. Such a distinction is arbitrary and unscientific. It is usually dictated by religious beliefs, based on specific interpretations of the philosophical doctrine of a so-called natural law. Such interpretations naturally differ from one place and time to another. They are essentially ideological and not open to critical argument. From the standpoint of science, any contraceptive method is as natural or artificial as any other. If you are interested in learning more about the doctrine of natural law, you can follow the appropriate link right below the text. Just click on it and you will find a special essay discussing the terms nature and law. This essay gives you a brief history of the natural law doctrine, and it shows you why its positive utopian aspects have always had and continue to have their appeal. However, it also shows you why modern scientists were finally forced to abandon it altogether and to relegate it to the sphere of morals, that is, to the world of value judgments. In the final analysis, the idea of a natural law is a religious one. It has no place in science. This little example of an internal link shows that links play a very important role in our courses. You do not have to follow all internal and external links in order to learn the basic facts. But if you do follow the links, you can study the subject matter in depth and gain a much better understanding. This way, the courses can take you to the level of a master's degree. But try it out for yourself.